Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaizo Redux Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Moklover. But I've never played as Alaska, I think, on the channel. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think I have. We're led by Ernest Gruning. Uh, we'll talk about him later, maybe, but we're consolidating The Last Frontier, but since I don't think I've ever played as Alaska before, like I said, I could be wrong, um, I want to go down eventually, uh, well, the Anne Ryan route, which we're going to go with, or route, here and eventually I would like to eventually do the rise of the new red or red new moon which sounds really really cool but we're gonna get, go down this route and get Anne Rind for I think it's saying, saying the person's name right Anne Rand oh Anne Rind and Rand my bad people are gonna be yelling at me in the comments but regardless consolidating the last frontier completely cut off from American aid adrift in the vast sea of nationhood is there anything more to Alaska as we establish ourselves the first steps of stability must be taken consolidating everything we have and at last knowing what it will take to survive on our own Towns, population count, GDP, everything needs to be checked off. Native immigration. As well as the last frontier break free. And also to get uh, the route. Uh, let's see. Uh, plays Alaska, go democracy, elect the market liberals, do your tree, and event invite uh, Rand into the government, and let her in. So, native immigration for yourself. With the savage Second American Civil War erupting in the lower 48, waves upon waves of refugees are coming to our borders. This is to be expected given the horrifying nature of civil war, but curiously, most of the refugees fleeing north seem to be Native Americans from various tribes across the U.S. As if someone is somewhere is guiding these masses of immigrants, uh, first peoples, to our lands. Some members have also informed us that semi-infamous Amerindian militant groups have come in as well, using the large numbers of other natives as cover. Among them being the notorious AIF, currently led by Elwood Towner, or as it goes now by Red, uh, Chief Red Cloud, and the famous Oglala Lakota War Chief. Despite the possible issues some rowdy redskins may cause, most of our government does not seem to care about this influx of Native Americans, and business will likely go on as usual. Who cares about a savage, a bunch of no good savages? Cool. Last Frontier Break 3. After decades of struggling across as a meager territory within the failing Leviathan that was the old US, the great land of Alaska has declared itself independent from the perfidious tyrants in Washington. Seeing that no fools from the lower 48 are outside, as they call it, shall appropriate Alaska's be bountiful natural resources and beautiful wilderness again, the Alaskan government now struggles to build a free nation state. However, whether the monopolistic capitalists in the Alaskan syndicate, the socialist progressives of James Wickersham, the democratic forces of the Alaska legislature, the newly arriving waves of Amerindians fleeing the Civil War, and even the Canadian, Japanese, and Russian agents hiding in plain sight, all now struggling against each other for power and influence, the final fate of the last frontier and her dash for freedom remains to be seen. Let's see where this true north takes the future. And then the Great Alaskan Expansion. The Barons are upturning everything. The Alaskan Syndic has pulled his money from its mass to mass buy out Alaskan land, a clear attempt to contest legislation power. Many, including Wickersham, have say this buyout is nothing more than a stepping stone and opening for the Barons to take over all of Alaska and the chaos of Alaska's departure from the lower 48. We can't allow this, can we? So various paths, blah, 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 Democratic loaded guns, foreign rule. I don't want to do foreign rule, so. Play as Alaska. State Democrat with Mark Libs. And there goes the Italian government. We have a giant cup of coffee here. Actually, cold iced coffee. 15 calories only per serving. Which sounds like a lot, but whatever. For, for coffee. Uh, but we have no stability. Or the, no uh, political party popularity. Which is fine. I mean, we're not going to stay how we're staying right now. Uh, we have not enough political power to do anything here. Okay. Can we build anything here? No. Um, I like infrastructure. That'd be nice. I guess we could go to this. We lose a little bit of political power, but I guess we get more consumer goods. But even then, we've like maybe one. Honestly, I might just stay to grab some army XP, maybe, maybe. But as much fun as this is, how much political power do we get? We don't even get one a day. Wow, that is a uh, kind of bad. But we have national spirits, the Alaskan Syndicate. It's a powerful group of businessmen who control large amounts of Alaska's natural resources. They have a large amount of sway over the government, but with that comes people who oppose them. We lose a lot of political power from this. Yeah, I don't like this group. And uh, the buyout's going to begin. And then we'll do the great first test, the great buyout. The native news broke of a massive buyout by Birch and Guggenheim. The great Alaskan expansion has been dubbed, shaking the Alaskan political world with the news of the Barons buying a quarter of Alaska's available land. Everything from oil wells to national parks has been brought up by the Barons in the wake of Alaska's succession from the Union to the many. This is akin to simply buying the entire state of Alaska. To some, they see nothing wrong. Uh, but everyone agrees with one thing. If this deal were to go through, like the Barons and the Alaskan Syndicate would have almost uncontested control over Alaska. Maybe more power than this legislation of President Gruning. My god. We can't do that in our first great test. 
After a nerve-wracking election, the legislation stands supreme with our own Ernest Gruning as president. Now, Gruning oversees the first trial, both literally and figuratively, of independent Alaska. The case of James Wickersham, the humiliated former representative turned revolutionary, will stand before the legislation and recount the circumstances of his attempted government coup before the Democratic jury will decide how to punish the man. Already, the Democratic Party calls for mercy, while the corporate party demands his death or even exile. Cool. Oh, do we have a foreign policy here? Uh, Alaska National Ambitions. Uh, American refugees. As America collapses under its own weight, hundreds of thousands of desperate refugees have been streaming into the Alaskan Territory, all these souls, desperate souls in search of a new home, free from the chaos of stricken America in recent years. As Alaska has a small population and vast amount of territory, we have room to spare, and can afford to warmly welcome these seeking a quaint and quiet new home here in the last frontier. Um, you can read this please, go ahead. It doesn't bother us too much. We don't care. Not like we can get really get involved. Uh, we would like that army speed, though. Attack is not bad. Supply consumption would probably be good. Uh, Simon Bolivar Buckner Jr. Organization supply consumption is usually what I like to do the most. Yeah, I'm going to do that one because th just going through here, it's going to take a while. And I'm not sure we need... I'm not, I'll be honest. I have no idea how much war we're actually going to be doing in this campaign. <laughs> I'm assuming not very much, but we'll see. Alaska's two influences. Alaska may have broken free from American tyranny, but that doesn't mean we simply are free of foreign vices. Canada and Japan both vie for influence over Alaska, and we're more than happy to play them against each other. However, if the influence of one of the faction grows too high and their opinions grow too low, bad things could happen. Can Alaska ever truly be free? Do we have a balancing act? Here we go. It's currently stable. Dealing with the barons. The day has come. President Gruding is set to act on the first mass buyout of Alaskan lands by the syndicate. The Great Alaskan Expansion, as has been dubbed, has uprooted the Alaskan political system and started a mini power struggle between the legislation and the syndicate. Allowing the deal to go through could possibly lead to the barons buying all of Alaska, while blocking the deal would enrage the barons. Some have proposed a compromise, refunding the barons money for land that was obtained illegally, while letting the rest of the purchase go on unhindered. Others, including a certain James Wickersham, wants the deal to be stopped entirely, while well, some do not want to impede the barons in any way. Wickersham has stated that if any part of the deal were to go through, he and his supporters would perform a general strike and march on to Juneau to stop the oppression of workers by the syndicate. This adds just another layer to the already tense situation and makes an adequate compromise almost impossible. Impossible. Huh. Democracy, huh? Those are loaded guns. James Wickersham, huh? Hmm. I don't want him to take over Alaska. Uh, if any part of the deal were to go through, he supports with performing general strike. Refund the money from legal purchases. I'm not sure what I was going to do. God, did I choose wrong here? Establish a Matanuska colony. Within the Matanuska Valley, we have established a farming colony that will surely rake in economic prosperity. It has been settled by many who flee, fled from America during the Civil War. Alaskan Air Command. Hey, did it get daily air experience? Actually, I might do that one first. Although Alaska would be the last place to be considered for any sort of air defense by those of the United States, it's become the front line ensuring that the last frontier and its skies are not overwhelmed by the enemy. Or armed forces, my bad. Alaska's armed forces are in a sorry state. The territory guard is the only semblance of an army that we have, and we have neither an air force nor a navy to speak of. If we're ever to join the world stage, we need an army that can repulse all foreign invaders. Makes sense. The last frontier. Also nicknamed the uh, Great Land after the Aleut word Alakskak, Alakskak, of the same meaning, as well as the land of the Midnight Sun, the other true north, Seward's Folly, Seward's Icebox, and even President Andrew Johnson's Polar Bear Garden. The last frontier, or simply Alaska, was once the largest of America's territorial possessions and now stands as its own independent and free nation. A frontier man's dream, Alaska is a land of rugged and beautiful wilderness and icy, rich and stormy seas, all teeming with natural mineral bounty for any of the who dare to venture in this wild land. Though hard to develop and settle, Alaska holds potential like few other places in North America, and this icy mistress shall yield great riches, whether it be mineral, ore, fish, stocks, uh, natural resources, timber, cattle fields, hunting grounds, oil, or fertile soil under the midnight sun, to any who can truly tame the left frontier, the large and Juno. The bio going through has enraged Wickersham supporters who see this deal going through is akin to the barons buying the entirety of Alaska, and as promised, workers enraged by the barons' unfair treatment are taken to the streets in a general strike, aided by Wickersham and his other allies. In a fiery speech held in Juneau, Wickersham denounced Alaskan Kassinikin and the legislation, which he sees as being weak. In his closing remarks, he has urged that a stronger hand is needed to deal with the barons and insinuated a redder uh, set of ideas. The Juneau police have taken to the streets to deal with the strike, and throughout the day, the general strike grew more violent. Anarchy almost overtook the city, and some workers started actively clashing with both the police and their territory guard. Some are even afraid that the general strike could even dislodge the legislation government, and with the growing violence, they very uh, well be right. Could be right. Due to the bloodshed, Wickersham and the protesters were arrested. The workers overthrow the government. Yeah, we're going to do that one. Yay. Oh, he just bypasses. Nice. Alaska's first election. 
The current state of Alaska's political system was forged in a temporary alliance during the Great Bio, and although progressive members hold positions as a president and vice president, they hold these positions due to a necessary coalition between the Democratic and Republican parties. In the case of speaker of legislation, who has a small title, so if parties refuse to assist each other again now, the Republican, Democratic, and Corporation parties will attempt to get a majority of their candidates into office, thereby controlling most aspects of the Alaska alongside the president. Corporate victory. Uh, Austin Lathrop and the Alaskan uh, Business Interest Group have one of the highest offices in Alaska and now look to implement their ideas throughout all of Alaska. They seem to be in cahoots with the barons and more likely to be offered concessions to them. Building Alaskan National Identity Alaska had an interesting and diverse history to say the least. From the first indigenous settlers thousands of years ago who crossed into North America from over the Bering Sea, to the short-lived colonial enterprise of the Russian empires, through Anglo-imperialism and our former existence as an American territory and prospective state now. A future few thought would exist. A future is a free and sovereign Alaska nation after breaking free from America in order to protect her paradise from the fires of the Second American Civil War due to the federal government abandoning us and leaving Alaska to its own devices. In order to unite this history and the very people who have come to call this infantile nation home, we must establish a true Alaskan national identity so that all people within Alaska come together, share by uh, shared patriotism and nationalism to support protecting and progress this new, uh, newly independent Alaska frontier and defend our hard-fought sovereignty. Despite disagreements with anti-statehood and pro-independence movements like the AKIP, the government has moved to work with them and along with allies among the indigenous tribes and peoples of Alaska, which will start to foster a unique and shared Alaskan national identity for all in this new nation to adopt and protect. Because after all, all true sons of the last frontier want the same thing, a free and self-governing Alaska. From the bush in the north slope to Kodiak and Aleuts, from Anchorage to Seward and to Tehom and Fairbanks, from Skag Skagway and Ketchikan to Valdez and Juneau, all of Alaska shall be united as one under one shared banner once and for all, for we are all to true, true north and must defend it together. But fusing the cultures, practices, beliefs, and ideas and other cultural and socioeconomic facets and intricacies of our constituent populations and people from the far corners of the massive land will build a patriotic and syncretic bastion to protect the last frontier, now and forever. Now a territory, now a state, now a colony, but a nation, all together in the northern star and north to the future. Strange offer from the House of Liechtenstein. Alaska's independence and relatively weak government has led to wide-scale land buyouts from individuals of great wealth. While the main man behind the large-scale land purchase has been the resource barons, a strange offer has become the Alaskan government from the Prince of Liechtenstein. This offer is based off an old offer made by the Prince of Liechtenstein during the sale of Alaska by Russia, would involve the Principality of Liechtenstein purchasing Alaska for no small price, and would exchange provide funds for investments and allow the resource barons uh, governing Alaska without hindrance. While well, the plan is little to no popular support, the House of Liechtenstein has very deep pockets, and the resource barons would gladly sell out Alaska for a high price. High enough price? No? Sure, that must be a joke. Hmm. I'm halfway attempted to go mass mobilization, but uh, we don't have the manpower. We don't have any industry. And go deep battle, maybe? Combat with goes down, which is not that terrible. Do you get any population here? No, you don't. Oh, well, you gotta go mass mobilization, yeah. Get a lot of recovery rate. Get the 5% recruitable population. Infantry combat width goes way down. Which honestly would make a lot of sense uh, gameplay wise, like lore wise. We have to go mass assault because we don't have. We're going to mass mobilize everybody. Enemies, enemies to take our territory? Well, they're going to get killed off. Of course, then again, you can go down here and you still get 5% down here as well. But this makes more sense as we use infantry and native groups and. What not like that. The election of 1937. With Ricochet Minnesota supporters being dealt with, Alaska is safe from radical forces. Internal elections have been held, and current President Ernest Gruning has announced that he will not be running for the re-election. Vice President Bob Bartlett has taken his place as head of Alaska's Democrats, but Bartlett is not the main contention. The three contenders are Representative Anthony Dimond, Congress fighting Dan Sutherland, and Austin E. Lathrop, Alaska's first homegrown millionaire. Well, hello. Corporate victory. With concessions to the barons. Without an economy, Alaska cannot thrive, and the large blocks of our nation are tied up with the syndicate barons. Even though Lathrop and Alaskan business interest groups value the free market and small business, and fear the monopolization of businesses by the Alaskan syndicate, the focus of the party is still business, and it's still imperative for the business to be the center of a budding nation. After all, the barons are still businessmen. This guy looks not unhappy. The banner of the last frontier. As we move forward to solidify the foundations of free democracy here in the last frontier, we must decide upon many things, including what banner should rally behind in order to get around a unifying symbol to the people. The current flag of Alaska, a dark blue field, emblazoned with a beautiful and ever-present Big Dipper of our night skies, is an aesthetically pleasing and simple design, but it still holds links to the lower 48th falling union and the ideas of Americanism we're trying to stray away from. Pressure has been mounting from independence-minded and anti-Americanist factions pioneered by the fiery libertarian Joe Vogler, and minorly supported by other large figures like anti-statehood activist Austin E. Lathrop. Should we cater to this rising force and design a new flag for a beautiful Alaska here atop the one true north? 
Well, we can't keep that black then. Go, they can't influence polar bear design. Adapt, they can't be libertarian influence. Yeah, that makes sense for our, what we're doing here. <gasps> oh, that's actually really, really cool. I like that. I don't like the big difference though here, but I like the polar bear. Guarantee a free market. Collaboration with the corporations. We need political power. So it's that the Alaskan syndicate wants little to do with Alaska's people. And everything to do with their money. If the legislation runs the people's uh, side of things while the syndicate analyzes the economic side, our government can remain both friendly and capitalism or capitalist oriented. In addition, we can regulate the barons so loudly and make sure to keep them out of our hair. Magnus, Calcord, Horland, Soldier, and Artist. The Alaskan Territorial Guard are hundreds of fascinating characters, one of which is a famed Alaskan artist, Magnus Colcord Rusty Horlin. Uh, Horlin was born in Skane country in Sweden, moving to Massachusetts at a young age and attending the Fenway School of Illustration, which is where he learned how to paint. Horlin made his first visit to Alaska in 1916, later moving to Otkiakvik and painting the Alaskan second scenery and native peoples Horlin uh, and, and native peoples. Horlin eventually moved back to the mainland, working as an illustrator for posters and magazines. As the situation in America worsened, he returned to Alaska, moving to Fairbanks in 1935, and working on various gold dredges until he enlisted in the Alaskan Territorial Guard upon its creation. Ireland immediately gained a high-ranking position under General Buckner due to his extensive knowledge of armaments, becoming one of the Alaskan Territorial Guard's first official commanders. Ireland, in addition to being an invaluable officer of the ATG, is one of the most prolific and famed artists in Alaska, being known for stunning depictions of Alaskan landscapes, with artistic prowess even being utilized by President Austin E. Lathrop to make inspiring propaganda posters for the Alaskan Territorial Guard. Capturing Alaska's beauty one brush stroke at a time. We have a core population of 150,000. Our total manpower is 32,000, so we literally are conscripting like a fifth of the entire population. I love it. Obviously not enough, and I need more coffee, but it's not enough. So let's come back over here. Ooh, you know what? For this time, yeah, we can go to early mode. It's fine. <gasps> Do we have not even one to work with? Okay. That makes sense. Bath guides. Your tree invite and run and and rand into the government and let her in. They need to keep her. Use her strength and yield to democratic proceedings. Oh, look at that! Influence is one, 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 one. Nice. Atlas shrugged. Oh, there we go. The first election's behind us, and Alaska's democracy is safe now. It's time for, though, for a new independent nation to look to the future. Though no one ever knows for sure what lies ahead, every once in a while a visionary comes forward. A rare person with a near clairvoyance decided to take the reins of the compatriot's destiny and blaze a path into the beyond. By pure luck or possibly divine intervention, our fledgling nation has been graced with one such visionary. None other than Elisa Zinovyevna Rosenbaum, or as she's more commonly known by her pen name, is Anne Rand. Which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. They could not have delivered her to us at a better time. Arriving on a fair shores from her native Russia, escaping some turmoil or another. Rosenbaum has become quite popular in many circles for her rather interesting ideas in economics and society, that she is slowly developing in her own individualistic, rational, free, safe, free, capitalist ideology she calls objectivism, for she wanted to name it existentialism, but the term was already taken. With their influence growing more and more by the day, the victorious Alaskan business interest groups has petitioned the Alaskan Congress to grant Rosenbaum emergency powers in order to rapidly and efficiently build up Alaska's newly independent economy. With their handily won seats in the recent elections, Congress is all but guaranteed to accept a request, and Rosenbaum will be quickly sworn in as acting governor of Alaska, where she will assuredly execute her multitude of objectives and seek to revolutionize less frontier. Reason Ruski idealist? Oh, look at that. Forward to the brighter future. Because we like bright futures here. Oh. Okay. Sounds good to us. <gasps> this is a Rosenbaum. So we're not going to go completely insane here. So. Objective is heaven. So we're not going to go down this route. Even though I want to go down this route. Uh, maybe we'll still go down this route. Let's see what happens. She's going to be a sane Alyssa Rosenbaum. She can reclaim America like any other path and get a claim on Russia with a mid-war event. We can go to war with Russia too. And I want that unique set of ideology and flavor and unique focus. So... We're insane, but just not that insane. For now. Concessions of the Baron. 
Without an economy, Alaska cannot thrive, and the largest blocks of our nation are tied up with the syndicate brands. Even though Lyle Thrub and Alaskan business interest groups value the free market and small business, and fear the monopolization of business by the Alaskan syndicate, Books, the party still business, and it's imperative for business to be the center of our budding nation. After all, the barons are still the businessmen and then the brands first steps. As President Anne Rand pushes her objectivist agenda while in office, able to do so with sweeping authority with her temporary emergency powers, many within her cabinet, and among her allied parties and congressmen like Wally Hickel, and the young Joe Vogler and Jack Coghill have expressed a concern for the rising tensions and anti Rand sentiment throughout Alaska, largely among the indigenous communities and the remaining committed socialists, conservatives, and mainstream liberals left in the last frontier's political arena. To remedy the concerns of the masses and to appease a bulk of the less radical detractors, this moderate coalition pleads that Rand revoke our emergency powers immediately and work with normal, within normal democratic systems once again, and will pursue the objective of reformation at a fair and steady pace rather than at full throttle, which is risk complete complacence of Rand's administration. How should proceed? Limit our pace with rationality and forethought as Rand teaches. Yeah, why not? So I'm sure at this point some people, some people, but I definitely will play her as her again sometime. Deregulate the economy. Wow, factory apple goes up by extreme amount. Then again, that's not really extreme when you have like nothing here already. Uh, oh, we have the research slot. Guaranteed free market. A truly free market means more business, more competition, and more money. We must ensure the Alaskan economy is not targeted by the government, restricted by regulation, or protested against uh, by entrepreneurs. Well, as a fair and free market, through the path to our future, ensuring healthy competition in all fields, after all, having the government stick their noses in the working of businessmen never helped anybody. Market sponsored education. The current failing system of the public education is dumbing down our children on a wide scale. To make our children getting sure they're getting the best education possible, private companies have gotten into the education game. Now, children who can afford to attend elite private schools instead of failing public schools will quietly shift funding from private schools to an, as an added incentive. <clears throat> in addition, we can be allowing companies to pay the cost of school lunches, uh, supplies, and other necessities in return for a little extra added to the curriculum. Oh, we only have two research slots. I thought we had three. Uh, this, uh, uh, I guess I was playing as America at one point, so. Who needed political power, right? Nice. It's no secret that Alaskan syndicate wants little to do with Alaska's people and everything to do with their money. The legislation runs the people's side of things. Yeah, yeah. Keep the barons slightly and uh, regulate them slightly and make sure to keep them out of here. Fishing contest. For Alaskans, fishing is more than a pastime. It's a way of life. But the people have also taken to using fishing as a competitive sport. Placing wagers on who can catch the most fish is rapidly growing to the point where fishing contests are being held in Alaska on a wide level. Hefty bets are placed on each side. At one hour, and one, the hour begins a crew of fishermen departs, and by the end of a three-hour span, the boats are recalled. The judges decide a winner based on the amount of fish hauled in, the length, width, and height of the fish. But the, by the end of the day, a winner is declared, and the fish caught are fried up for a massive supper for the fishermen and the standing crowd. And even the losers shake hands and sh share a few drinks with the winners while rem reminiscing about old fishing tales. Resist the minimum wage. Oh no, no minimum wage here in our Alaska. Implementing a minimum wage will drive businessmen broke with the salaries of employees. For the business's sake, and the people's too, it's best to move into the system. True freedom means to pay your employees whatever an employee sees uh, fit. Uh, tearing down tyranny of the fountainhead. With uh, Anne Rand's position as a government, or as our president, secures as she relinquishes her emergency powers and once again yields to normal democratic proceedings, she's begun to evolve her ideology uh, to free to evolve her ideology at a peaceful and steady pace, reforming her society democratically along with it as a fountainhead or independent source of inspiration and novel creative genius of the last frontier. Through tough and tense battles with her enemies in the Alaskan Senate, Rosenbaum and her coalition of capitalists and fellow, few fellow objectivists battle to pass a transformative legislation in any way they can, while maintaining the democratic integrity and stable fabric of our infantile republic on our path to turn Alaska into the objectivist night watchman's state without restraints. Uh, though few, few truly get the nature of her actual ideas and positions, a simple and distilled concept of a modern man, needing to be as a heroic being, with his own happiness as a moral purpose of his life, with productive achievement and as his noblest activity, and reason as his only absolute resonates with well with many, allowing to garner a small but growing and rapidly royal bunch of fanatics, supporters, and fellow politicians at her side, aiding her in the miss missing of building that individualist, rational objective, an understanding capitalist society that shackles no being and gives them all the platform to build their own way to paradise and fortune if they have the will and rational, um, or uncloud of mind, achieve their own dreams and desires as she has, has and continues to do so. The modern democratic path to objective utopia for every free individual. We lose a lot of stability and political power and market liberalism. We get a little bit more map, our 1945. Huh. You get eight more building slots, four more civvies, two more millies, a synthetic factory, a fuel silo, and you get a lot of war gold. Oh my god. Wait. Oh, I get a lot of claims. Nice! Uh. I don't think we have a navy. America's like, no. But we're the real America. Oh, look at the green. Green guys are gone. Pretty normal. We actually have. Oh, we can actually build more than just guns, huh? Maybe we should make a military. Huh. 
That'd probably be smart to do. My bad. Mm, it's not bad. Then again, cavalry would be pretty nice here too. I mean, we're all the way, all the way up here. Mounted lo loyalists, army loyalists. Well, do the best you can here, guys. Guarantee free market and education too. Uh, deregulate the economy. Lots of fair means that we could do care less about what the corporations do. We could afford to throw a blind eye to stock crashes and environmental problems and favor a perfectly free economy. If just something terrible does happen, we could trust people surely take it in their own hands. Of course. Private health care plan. Having a centralized health care in such a large and centralized nation is practically impossible. The best solution is to have a health care system that runs privately. Ensuring health care is kept in the hands of insurance brokers allows for competitive pricing and options for the health care of Alaska's people, as well in a private system. The best providers of care reign supreme and inadequate providers are driven out by the market forces of the market. Yeah. An objectivist Alaska. Holding on to power by yielding to the democratic process and staving off from any political rivals, President Alyssa Rosenbaum, better known as Anne uh, Rand, uh, has taken to transforming Alaska into an objectivist paradise at a slow, steady, and stable pace with the aid of local liberal and capitalist politicians. They're open-minded enough to at least work with her to bring economic prosperity and rapid financial growth to Alaska and themselves, if not adopting her strange and ever-growing ideology themselves. Regardless, the process has gone so far, well so far, and despite some initial growing pains and bumps along the road, the last frontier is beginning to evolve into a true individualist, rational, and objective paradise for the, every man with the will to chase after their dreams. I want that stability. Good God. Hey, a third research slot. We are now becoming educated. So, we could go to war, but... I mean, who do we ally with? The Black Revolt. Oh, the Black Revolt. Yeah. Hello. State Fair 937. Today, the annual Alaskan State Fair was held. The great tradition features many of the normal State Fair attractions, such as carnival food, rides, and many other uh, attractions, as well as... Uh, some Alaskan touches that made it unique from the other fairs in the mainland, many of which have been canceled because of the war. The president, as well as a, around a thousand other residents of Anchorage, attended and took part in the festivities, playing carnival games and riding rides and partaking in many of the carnival delicacies such as fried butter and candy apples. As well as the crowning of the fair queen, a baby show, boxing matches, horse races, dances, a rodeo, and baseball games were also witnessed. The fair grows much needed money for Alaska and was a massive hit with the citizens. We look forward to next year. What fun! Today, hearings have been conducted in Congress over the supposed infiltration of fisheries and canning unions by syndicalist agents. Recent allegations over syndicalist infiltration by Anthony Diamond or Dimond has led to the formal investigation, and all members of the newly established committee seek to get to the bottom of this whole mess, union leaders, fishermen, canning workers, and even the postmaster of Nome, were all brought before the committee for questioning. They are asked standard questions such as how long have you been a resident of Alaska, as well as are you now or have you ever been a member of the Socialist Party of America, as well as questions such as are you receiving newspapers from the Communist of France or the Union of Britain. Most of those who ask respond to no. And after weeks of hearing in inconclusive evidence was thrown, shown and the committee was shut down, we trust that the Communist Air Force have better things to do than attempt to infiltrate our sparse nation. Meaningless fear mongering. Yeah, man. Ooh, more daily army speed. Ooh, recruitable population. It hurts our division organization, but barely. Alaskan Territory Guard. Before the days of Alaska declaring independence, a small group of reserves known as the Territory Guard, or Eskimo Scouts, were formed by Major Marvin Muktuk Marston to protect Alaska in case of invasion by either the Japs or Canucks. As a scenario, the United States proper was not able to defend Alaska. While they're mostly small, this organized group's militias are also Alaska's only form of defense. Time's come and the call is rung out uh, to the guard. The time to mobilize it now. Territory Guard will protect Alaska. You bet they will. Alaska Navy. Because I do want these XP for our groups here. The current Alaska Navy is almost completely non-existent. It consists of a few icebreakers and American ships left behind. If Alaska is ever to be taken seriously on the global stage, we need Navy to match. That's my first though. Commission Fleet. Um... Draft cost, that's not bad. Gas and oil, not bad. Fuel gain plus 5% command power. Ski troops, that's cool. Two ski divisions. That's actually really, actually really cool. Mobile army plus 25% speed, holy crap. That's actually really awesome. Mm, I think they're super needed. Mobile army, trucks, light tanks, heavy tanks. Influence cannon will be raised by one. Uh, oh, this one. Actually, that's fine. Oh, yeah, we got one division here. That makes sense. Led by... Oh, a couple divisions, actually. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Do we want to go down? Mobile warfare? We don't even have the industry for tanks, do we? Basic light tanks? Well, what happens if we get pierced immediately and we can't support with, with enough fuel? Actually, we got a lot of fuel. Well, a decent amount of fuel. What if they can pierce us? You know what? We could try to go mobile warfare. It's an attempt. 
Alaskan Territory Guard. Alaskan Air Command. Alaskan Navy. Yeah, I definitely gotta do that one too. Foreign Rule. Oh, God. The Legion Standard Administration will be really unique. Purchase of Oroborg. Sponsor the Jesuit Order. Very strange. Very, very strange. We do need Commissioner Fleet, though. Take trawlers. See civilian vessels. Seizing civilian vessels. Canadian construction. Japanese construction. Commission a flagship. Spend the Dutch Harbor. National Naval Plan. Way more naval to XP every day. Navy for a world stage. Increased production. Construction speed. Wow. That's not. Holy cow. That's just 25% flat construction speed. That's a lot. Bombing. Fight by land. The bell didn't have enough support and it failed. That fails, act passes. Oh, look at that. Air, whole way more range. There's a lot of unique things here. I like, I, I like this tree. Oh, can we actually expand upon it and use it very well? Probably not, but we'll see. Build faster. Uh, gas and oil. Build weather stations. A CAA. Objective is Alaska. So this one will remove concessions of the barons, which is good. Remove economic regulation, which is not good to remove. Remove the free market, which is not good to remove. Remove uh, private health care, which is eh. And add an objective as Alaska. So give a factory output at all, or no? You get 35%. But you do get rid of that minus 25, 0.25 political power loss. So. And you could join the Entente, or line up with the Pacific States. Intervenes to the American side of the... Those guys. If we line up with Canada, they might give us everything, though. I don't. I don't know. Ooh, that's that's uh, interesting to figure out, huh? Hmm. Ooh, now they're fighting each other here too. New England. They said they did support the Pacific states, but I don't want to be the Pacific states. I want you guys to train. What template do you guys even have? They're just guys with guns. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I figured. Ah, <sighs> what are we missing? Guns. Sounds about right. You know, of course, we can just buy our own guns, too. But still. I'm an objectivist Alaska. Holding on to power by yielding on to the democratic process and staving off many political rivals, President Elisa Rosenbaum, better known as Anne Rand, has taken to transforming Alaska into an objectivist paradise at a slow, steady, and stable pace with the aid of local liberal and capitalist politicians. They're open-minded enough to at least work with her to bring economic prosperity and rapid financial growth to Alaska and to themselves, if not adopting a strange and ever-evolving ideology themselves. Regardless, the process has gone well so far, and despite some initial growing pains and bumps along the road, the last frontiers begin to evolve into a truly individualist, rational, and objectivist paradise for the, every man with the will to chase their dreams. Yeah. Did I just read that? I think I did. Oh well. I have a 938, everybody. Oh, we have no research speed. Okay. We're gonna need research speed. As we deregulate the economy, of course. Hey, but we'll see what happens. The Tuberculosis Association of Alaska. Medicinal care has always been hard uh, this far up north, isolated from the rest of the world in a frozen and hard traverse tundra, but Alaskans get by all the same. Efforts to relieve the recurring medical crises have often become famous, such as a tale of the famous sled dogs Balto and Togo mushed by Norwegian Alaskan dog breeder and sled dog trainer Leonard Sepalo. No also introduced Siberian Huskies to Alaska in the journey to the inf in the famous race of mercy to bring diphtheria antitoxin to the suffering people of Nome in twenty twenty five, but not all of our healthcare hazards are so glamorous. Alaska, and particularly those more rural Western Alaska in the bush have been seized by a spreading and a repeating epidemic of tuberculosis in recent years, claiming the lives of both young and old, strong and weak all across the last frontier. Seeking to get a handle on this crisis once and for all, the Alaskan government has organized and heavily funded the creation of a new national tuberculosis association of Alaska, aimed entirely at eradicating this horrible disease from the nation from the wonders of modern medicine. Hopefully, within due time, we can catch up to the rest of the West and save our people from preventable and curable ailments. That no more Alaskans die sick and cold in the darkness. Absolutely. So we are forced to go join the Entente, which is okay. The Kingdom of Canada it stands our most natural ally as well as their only neighbor by land and a gallant protector and economic partner. Time's coming to make an alliance official. And we'll stand by the king in Entente through thick and thin. God save the king. God save Alaska. Um. Well. Oh, we can actually do stuff here. The Empire of Japan. If they support us. Oh, man. Oh, no. What, so why don't we go this? Goes wary. Hmm. Oh, we can actually 
We'll give them influence here. Tariffs. A loan from Japan. Influence. Well, I want I want all of America. I want them to say, yeah, we love you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase opinion here. Uh, we'll get like no political power. We're going to make another save here, just in case. Because uh, if everything goes bad, I can come back to this one later on. But That being said, um, if we go with Canada, they might intervene and might give us everything. They might not give us everything. If we go to Japan, they won't give anything to anybody. They might give it to us if we go to war with the Pacific States of America. They might help us in a war against them. Uh, so we'll see what happens. If not, I might see some consequences, maybe. So let's go with Canada for now. Yeah. Opinion. Here, guys, you can have military access. Or 20%, huh? Really stable. So what happens if we go here? They're influencing stuff. Canada in power. We we'll try to join the Entente. If not, I'll come back and do some separate stuff there. But we still got to keep going with this one. Running telegraph lines, more war support, stability. Yeah, more research speed would be nice too. Um. Hmm. Run telegraph lines. The current state of nation is not one where we can afford to be disconnected from one another. And due to the nation's dire technological state, the best option is to run telegraph lines from one end of the nation to another. Yeah. Strong command. I mean, these are okay. Cold acclimatization gain factor is okay. You get rifles, which we could use. Adapt ice blasters. That's cool. Refine our factories. Further refine artillery is not bad either. And we're going to focus heavily on subs. Let's see, do they actually like us at all? Yeah, they kind of do. We don't care for them, though. I wanted to go with the Pacific States, but obviously our folks here do not allow us to go that way, because they're also market liberals. But we're pretty close to being social, they're being social liberals, and we're being market liberals. Please say yes, please say yes, please say yes. Hey, we joined the Entente. Nice. Uh, who are they at war with? Sh sh sure. We're now at war. Hey, we got more war support. Look at that. Okay. Well, can, if we're in the Entente, can we still like balance it out with them and Japan? Maybe. Maybe. Oh no, we'll see. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. We definitely need all this stuff. Yeah yeah. Give us everything you need. We, we need guys. We absolutely need. We actually need a dockyard too. Invitation to the IEDC. A delegation from the Canadian government arrived today to formally invite the Alaskan Republic to join the IEDC. Which I've read before. So you're going to do this, please go ahead. Well, join Invest 50 PP? Yeah, why not? And we're done uh, improving relations. Give control of state. Wait. Huh? Call to arms. Economy. Even more. I mean, we're already doing okay. Construction speed. Consumer goods extraction rate. Factory output, though, which is also very little. If we can build 20% faster. Uh, resources. You might get one more factory. You might. Crap. <laughs> get more resources and at least more output. Which helps out with nothing here. And it just helps us out with, helps out with output. So. But we do have infantry, two infantry divisions, which is not bad. Hey yeah, guys, we'll take everything you got. we got nine convoys left. Um, so when they intervene, we'll have to intervene too. I do want to get, build an air force though. If we can't do anything, we can still bomb the crap out of people. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've got the convoys for all this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We have no... We have dockyards. Alaskan indigenous... Uh, oh, look at this. Assistantship. Though there are plans possible to make all Native Americans within the now-burning USA into full American citizens so that they may fully integrate into our society, these plans were cut short due to the outbreak of the Second Civil War um, and the rise of independent states such as our last frontier as such. It's so now up to us to decide how we should deal with the native population. Currently, Alaska is just over 50% indigenous, indigenous by uh, count. Population count. Making American settlers and whites a minority. One of the last regions in North America were the first peoples outnumber whites. As such, many pushed for administration to go ahead with citizenship, citizenship plans, which would bring many American Indians into the political process, armed with forces, labor pool, and more. However, doing so would likely anger the more conservative Americanist elements with, uh, in our state, especially among the barons. What should we do? We can piss off the barons. Who cares? 
or market liberals here. Native Americans shall remain autonomous non-citizens. That's a lot of political power we could use, though. But we're market liberals, so we should do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we need to commission ships, too. At the moment, we may be capable of producing our own navy, but that doesn't mean we're cap cap incapable of paying others to make a navy for us. Japan and China both have... China and Japan. Japan and Canada both have several ships that could be willing to sell us. Yeah, absolutely. On time trading group, nice. Uh, EDC. Uh, sure, go on. Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't we? Can we, like, eventually, like, get all of America with Canada giving us everything? And then, um, join Japan later? Huh. <laughs> the permanent fund divide. Dividend. In order to incentivize more Americans from the lower 48, as well as educated or hardworking immigrants from abroad to come to the last frontier while also reimbursing our masses with a proportion of oil profits and other mineral and natural wealth, or yields, we begin to set up the permanent fund dividend system. Though still in the prototype phase, the system will work in a similar way to certain theories of a universal basic income, providing every permanent citizen $1,000 a year, so no strings attached, with the amount adjusted for inflation each year going forward and also subject to possible future changes necessary. A permanent citizen in the div dividend's eyes is any citizen that lives in the state for over a year while showing intent to stay indefinitely, and if the citizen needs to leave Alaska for an extended period of time for any reason, it must spend at least 72 consecutive hours in the last frontier every two years, and at least 30 consecutive days every five years, lest they lose their eligibility and have to reply after living here for one consecutive year all over again. In a land of free glory where you can't be too fat or drunk, and where no one says things like, let's see your high school equi equivalency certificate, sir, we should provide a service like none other, open to most citizens regardless of race, sex, age, origin, religion, lifestyle, or whatever, although newly convicted felons are barred from receiving it if the crime is perpetrated or in, in against the state of Alaska going forward. Overall, the permanent fund dividend should hopefully incentivize more people to come to Alaska and stay in Alaska, hopefully helping to alleviate our population issues and our lack of educated workers and intelligentsia. Setting up the dividend's main offices in Homer, out on the Kenai Peninsula, south of Anchorage, the program is set to roll out any day now, so let's be sure to keep those immigration offices open. Welcome to Alaska. Here's a thousand bucks. That's actually really cool. <sighs> we need more political power, god dang it. <sighs> dang it. We need more political power really badly. What is this? Uh, he's not bad. He's not bad either. Not bad. Ooh. Lathrop. I really don't like Lathrop here. Royal Wedding. Can I replace him with anybody else? Dang it. Well, we're going to talk about Alaska's new fleet next. Alaska's post office. America left Alaska woefully undeveloped, and one of the key things was that left in shambles Alaska's post office. To better improve national unity and connect our nation, a robust Alaska post office must be established to maintain. At the moment, we may be incapable of producing our own navy, but that does not mean we're incapable of paying others to make a navy for us. Japan and Canada both have several ships that could be willing to sell us. Who should we buy from? Uh, buying from Canada will surely increase Canada's influence, while buying from Japan will surely increase Japanese influence. So right now, do we get anything from this? Alright, so I'm thinking this. We're, we're with Canada already. They like us. We're literally in the th on top with them. But we don't want to be dominated by them. And if we buy ships from Canada, that means they have less ships for their own war efforts. Which well, I don't like. We buy from Japan, we buy ships from their own war efforts, and that means nothing to us. Or it means less to us. So, we'll go with that one. Because we can raise, uh, because now they're equal, still equal, which is good. Oh, sorry, Canada. Oh, that's where we get the dockyards. It's alright, whatever. Um, we need those dockyards now, so we're gonna go with Japanese construction. Japan was so generous to provide us with a brand new navy. With this, a powerful naval alliance has been struck between us and allowed prosperity on both sides. For now, Japan has agreed to fund the construction of several new ships in Alaska. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to play both sides here, you know? Commission a flagship. Our Navy currently consists of a ships bought from Japan and Canada. We need a flagship of a proud vessel that has the crown and glory of the entire Alaska Navy. Uh, I would like that, but it's easy to make uh, stuff here. Jewish immigrants to Alaska. Following the establishment of the Manasuka Sitsuna Valley Colony, along with further Jewish settlements being successful in Skagway, Petersburg, Seaward, Baranoff's Island, and Anchorage, our government has begun the second most important step, the finding of colonists to live within the colony. With America itself burning, the most obvious source for colonists is to effectively cut off. Well, some within the endless stream of refugees have the skills and mental fortitude required for the harsh life of a farmer in the last frontier, there are few, very few far in between. 
A place where similar colonies are already being drafted, or a strong and more permanent source of potential colonists is needed. And who's better source than those virtues than the Jewish people? Suffering oppression and scapegoating seemingly seem since time immemorial. The chosen people are just kind of people we need in Alaska. To this end, the series of international ads and promises of land, freedom, and hope have been undertaken by the government. Taking inspiration from Reinhard Heydrich's own courting of Jewish people, we're already seeing a massive spike in immigrants and Jews, and with words of horrors being undertaken by Heydrich's regime, the Jewish population are seemingly all too happy to go with land, though truly granted freedom. We truly offer what Heydrich promised. Commissioning a flagship? Of course, but then we got to secure the Bering Sea. The Bering Sea is now contested between us and Russia. Russia's naval presence, however, is lacking, and an opportunity has presented itself. We can secure the Bering Sea and give Alaska a place on the world stage. Invent invest in icebreakers. Due to Alaska's climate, having an active navy is hindered by the large ice sheets present on our coast. So, all this predicament, we've we'll invested in a fleet of icebreakers that will make it possible to have a powerful navy. Uh, so, these civilian ships. Alaska has come to many civilian vessels that can be easily converted into naval vessels. And given the right modifications, this move may not be popular, but it's necessary uh, for making the Alaska Navy strong. Build weather stations. Ensuring that the skies are clear for our bright paws will be the first step in maintaining air superiority over the air frigid Alaska Gulf, as numerous mountain ranges and isolated lands beyond. Hey. Nice. I think it's American Union State. Now, I want to see if these guys get involved here. Because if they do, we will get involved ourselves, too. Then again, I did want to make some trucks. Tanks. We have no tanks yet, though. <sighs> we'll see. Mission flagship. So, opinion is three. It's not bad. Political equilibrium. Oh, good. Um, wow, we got a lot of... Oh, we got quite a few things here, don't we? Of course, we do want to make subs, but I want to wait till sub three. Sub twos are just... Mm, they're not great. Sub twos, I've never found them to be very good. When you have torpedo threes, that's very good though. We're not gonna make these carriers. We'll keep this here. We'll keep this here. Uh, light ships. We'll keep that here. Proof carriers are fine. Cruiser subs. Proof subs. Huh. 60 organization, 30 HP, 60, 20 HP, 70% reliability, 75% reliability. You throw that on there. That's 17.2 versus. 18.3. They move a little bit faster. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to waste manpower with improved sub twos though. But then again, doing all sub probably wouldn't matter too much either. There you go. A sub navy. And then more convoys. Because we're going to port stuff too. There you go. Because I want that flagship too. Uh, expand Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor is one of the few ports in Alaska that still has active traffic. The trade between us and Japan has stimu stimulated the port, but it still cannot handle large amounts of traffic. And expansion is due one that can get the harbor to handle a large amount of traffic. Gas and oil. Something seems essential to all oil to our armies is fuel. And fuel is something we are having trouble getting across the vast reaches of Alaska. Having a well-supplied army is critical to national survival, and that's why we're getting fuel to our machine is a must. With a mobile army. An army that must be mobile and able to defend the vast Alaskan nation with little infrastructure. To many, that seems impossible, but to us, it's very doable and will, will require only modification to existing equipment. So we do want to go with these guys. We will need some medium tanks eventually. They're not super necessary right now, but we don't have the industry for it. But maybe someday we will. Draft for the cause. Alaska simply does not have a large enough population to wield a large army on its own. We're going to get enough people to willingly enlist, so to solve that problem, we've instituted a draft. All able-bodied Americans, males, must serve to defend Alaska. Oh, I'll get about this. Again, please go ahead. Boop. Ski troops. That seems really cool. One thing that Alaskans specialize in is skiing. This allows us to adapt to proficiency in using cross-country skis to the battlefields. We can also decimate enemy populations uh, by outmaneuvering uh, their armies. We all have a great advantage when using ski troops in the vast forests in a place where there are little to no roads. GM Canada, huh? Snow cruisers. Strong command. Command is currently quite weak. Generals and field marshals have very little accountability, and the vast majority of the command structure is very weak to non-existent. The ATG has no discipline and is running wild in Alaska countryside. We are weak, our command is in shambles, and we must have a strong, centralized command in order for us to survive. Beyond the Ice Age. Technology in Alaska is best outdated. Our office has barely been updated since the Great War, and half the army's uniforms are date back to the 1910s. As it advances the nation, we must advance our military technology to catch up with the rest of the world. Um, take trawlers. The large civilian trawlers are perfect for our navy. And with minimal refitting, they can be turned into powerful ships, can be easily defending the Alaskan coast from invaders. Build sawmills. One thing that we have an abundance of in Alaska's forests. And with such a presence of timber comes the ability to make a profit selling that timber to all reaches of the world. 
Due to that, we must produce all milk to make harvesting the wood cheap and easy. Build coal mines. Another measure or resource we have in abundance of is Alaska. In Alaska, it's coal. With coal, we can power homes and factories and have enough left over to sell to the world. Exploring the vast range of coal within Alaska seems to have no downsides. And Alaska Post Office, of course, we read earlier. Um, some gold rush? Why not? I like gold rush. One of the resources Alaska has is abundance of is gold. Historically, miners have come from far and wide to mine Alaska's gold, and it appears that the gold industry is taking off again in Alaska. With many options to deal with this influx, we can let civilian prospectors and entrepreneurs mine to their heart's content, or we can hand the gold out to the military and let them invest the profits and equipment for the army. So, off screen, I might get ourselves involved against the CSA. We can just go straight to war with them and have uh, Canada intervene on our behalf, maybe, and maybe we can start taking states from them, maybe, before they actually ally with uh, the U.S. of A. If they were to do that, so. But they, again, again, they're paternal autocrats, so we'll have to wait and see. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we can do with the uh, kingdom, or, <clears throat> I mean, just uh, normal uh, Alaska led by Alyssa Rosenbaum. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.